Um, what I wanted to share with people uh, was a, a little project that I've been doing with my GCSE group. Um, it dawned on me, I, I teach in an 11 to 18 school, uh, and I've been teaching A-level computing for quite some years, and I went to a, a GCSE, OCR GCSE uh, course, and it dawned on me how many people had no experience of teaching computing and were stepping up to the plate, and, uh, and I had endless admiration for them. Uh, and I think what we've got to do is try and come up with some, some projects that people can share. And I'd like the, the newsletter to be a place where people can share those. So this is one project that uh, I just want to share with you, which uh, I think combines uh, an introduction to binary with um, uh, logic, uh, logical operators uh, and some programming. Uh, I'm not sure how many people know about munching squares. Uh, if you go onto the Wolfram demonstration site, uh, this is their explanation of it. It's a plot of the cells on a grid satisfying bitwise exclusive OR operations uh, less than a, 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 a N for consecutive values of N. Um, and it was thought this was discovered by Jackson Wright on the RLE PDP-1 around 1962. Um, one of the great things about the CAS conference is that I haven't got a clue who Jackson Wright is, uh, but by the end of tomorrow, I'm absolutely certain someone will have come up to me and told me who he was, and someone else will have explained what a PDP-1 was, um, such is the... Um uh, such as the, 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 the diverse gathering we've got. Uh, but to explain this, this, this sort of maths up at the, uh, up at the top, um, basically, if we take a grid, uh, we've got the X and the Y axes, uh, and we've got them numbered, in this case, from, from, from naught. Uh, what we need to do is uh, we, we're going to determine the colour of the pixels by uh, comparing the... Uh, the uh, well, we're going to ex exclusive all the, the, the bits of the X and Y uh, axes. So, so to try and explain that, um, we're going to set this threshold value to, to, uh, uh, of n to 1, uh, and we've converted the indices to their binary equivalent. So along the bottom we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to, uh, up to 7, uh, and similarly uh, up, up the top in binary. Uh, so if we then take that first cell there, we've got the two indices x and y, 0, 0, 0, Exclusive all together, what that means is we're going to take each of those bits uh, and we're going to compare the two. And if, if we've got uh, one or the other uh, being a one, but not both, we will uh, um, have a, a value of one. Otherwise, we'll have a value of naught. So in this case, we've got naught. And then we can ask whether um, the naught is less than the threshold value, which is one. And in this case, obviously, it is. So that cell remains white. If we take the next cell up, we've then got the y value of one, and we can exclusive all those two. And this time we get a one. Is one less than uh, one? Sorry, in the, in the first case, it, it, it was, so it was white. In this case, it's not, so we can colour it black. If we take the third cell, just to uh, make sure everyone's got this, we can do the same thing. This time we exclusive all, and again we've got a binary number, this time that's two. So is two less than one? No, it isn't, so that one's black. And we can work our way up, and that first column will all be black apart from the first one. If we go into the second column, again we can exclusive all the two indices. This time we've got the uh, value of 0, 0, 1 on the x-axis and 0, 0, 0 on the y. We can exclusive all those, and we end up with a one. Is one less than one? No, it isn't, so that one's now black. And of course, on that one, exclusive oring those bits gives us a naught. So is naught less than one? Yes, it is. So we get black. And we can probably work out the rest of the pattern that that gives us. So we get this nice pattern with uh, the threshold value of, in this case, one. And then we can, uh, we, we've got successive threshold values, so we can then set n to two. And we then at two, and we, we, we perform the same operation, we get a slightly different pattern across the grid. And we then, at three, we get another pattern. And we can, as we work through threshold values, we can get different uh, patterns. And here's a set of patterns for a grid 16 by 16. Of course, these grids can be scalable. Um, and this is a 16 by 16 grid with successive values as we're working up. And you can set this as, a, as quite a nice little homework. If you, if you give the, the, the children a grid and give each, each person a different threshold value and they get them to, to colour them in. And when they come back in, you can put them together and make a little flick book so that you can see a little animation as that threshold value increases and goes through one right up to the, the range of the grid. And this is the animation that you then get. 
And this is munching squares. This, is, this, this was the thing that was, was, was discovered as what was called a display hack back in, way back in 1962. So you've got a nice little project here that involves the children uh, having to convert numbers into binary, having to use, in this case, an exclusive OR operation on or a bitwise operation on two binary numbers uh, and comparing it and, and developing a logical value. The next task is then to program it. And um, there's been a discussion on the uh, CAS forum, really, about... Um, you know, what languages to use at GCSE. I don't use one language. I, I, I try and encourage them to, to use a lot. And they, they come up from, from uh, Key Stage 3, where we've done a lot of work in Game Maker. Um, and I don't know if many people know that, but Game Maker has quite a powerful scripting language uh, that you can use. So here is, uh, um, well, one pupil's implementation in Game Maker of Munching Squares. All we've got on the room, if you're familiar with uh, Game Maker, uh, up here, we've just got a, um, uh, an object uh, that is a controller object, so there's no sprite attached to it. But it has, four, uh, well, three events, really. A create event, uh, a step event, and a draw event. And it's, it's a really useful environment for, um, for, it, for, inter for, for coding this solution because you, you can break the thing down into these three very distinct steps. First of all, you have to think about creating uh, the, uh, the, the, the structures that you're going to hold the... Um, the, the values in. So this is the, the code uh, that one of the pupils wrote. It, 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 simply, um, uh, it, it simply produces uh, a two-dimensional array uh, for holding the values of each pixel. We've then got the step-by-step um, -step operation where, again, it, the, I haven't got time to, if you like, go through all of the code, but the point is, again, it's, it's pretty simple. There is not hundreds of lines of code here. We're talking about sort of three or four lines of code, um, you know, carefully thought out. And then probably the most challenging part of a, of a project like this is working out how you're going to draw the, the representation of the logical values that you're holding in this two-dimensional array for each of your pixels. So again, that's then the, the draw event. Uh, and that's essentially the code for munching squares, and that will give you the animation when it, when it runs that I just showed you. Uh, on the last slide. Um, another student implemented it in Small Basic. Um, th this is rather more challenging because Small Basic doesn't have the logical bitwise operation, so he had to work out his own way of converting numbers to binary numbers and then working out how he could compare each of the, the bits with that, but 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 and, and I was a, I mean this was a very able student at, at GCSE, but nonetheless I, I was particularly impressed with his ability to to begin to think this through and work through the the stages involved. Uh, and again, he he got a working solution uh, for that, albeit a, a rather slow one. Um, this one's a, a, an example in Python. This was actually done by one of my A-level students. A much more elegant solution. Um, but the point is that it, it it's a relatively simple and quite a nice. Uh, wow factor to get this wonderful pattern that's generated uh, and so on. And, and you can then go away and you can say to the, the children, well, you know, it doesn't have to be an exclusive OR operation. What about experimenting with different types of relationships? And, and again, one of my children, the one that wrote the, uh, the Game Maker implementation, he went away and he spent a whole evening on this. Uh, just as an aside, so if anyone's used Star Logo, uh, that, again, it's got a, a wonderful grid-like environment built into it. It, it, it. it can't be too difficult to implement it in that, and I, not that I've, uh, I've, I've got that far yet. Um, but this, the, this child who did the Game Maker one, he, he, he went away and he came back the next day. Uh, that's your original munching squares, is, is J exclusive ord with I, and is it less than T? Uh, he uh, came up with various other possibilities. Uh, he looked at, at uh, modding things, oring them and then modding them. He looked at things that were equal. He looked at things that were anded together. He, he came back after one evening and said, uh, these are great ways. And these all generate different patterns. You know? And, and, and it, it really sparked his interest in, in just fiddling about changing different logical operations. Um, uh, all in all, I, I just felt it was a successful project and, and one that was, was, was worth sharing. Um, and really, the, the, the point of that is to say that, that 
the point of the newsletter is for people to share these sort of ideas. That, that's really why we produce it. Is, it is a newsletter for and by teachers. And, and what I'm really appealing for is for anybody who's got a project that they've used and it's worked in their classroom to send me a short report. Uh, you know, and, and it can have supplementary information that we can put on the web supplement. But if we can begin to use the newsletter, I've had loads of excellent reports over the, the, the years that we've been running this from staff saying, look, Star Logo, Game Maker, Scratch, uh, Build Your Own Blocks. People have said there's these wonderful resources. For a subject that didn't exist, we have got so many resources at our disposal. But what, we, but what we're not really doing at the moment is people saying how they're using them. And I think that's what I'm, I'm really appealing for, is for people to start sending me things that I can put into the newsletter that, 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 um, that, that give people projects that they can take into their classroom. And, and that way, you know, the, the, the newsletter is, is, it becomes a communal resource that, 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 that sort of smells of the classroom and, and, and a place where people can share, share their ideas. Uh, I'll just finish really by, by just saying there's one other thing that I started um, in, in, the last, in, this, in this issue of the newsletter. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, Look, there's a, this is very quickly then. Uh, final thing, there's a, a little column in here, my, my favourite book, um, where I'm appealing for people to send me a little uh, description of their favourite book um, because, again, it's just a matter of, of sharing good books. And I'll just take the opportunity to share two of mine that I've been reading recently. Algorithmic puzzles. I forget, I think it was Andrew who was saying that, you know, algorith getting children to think algorithmically is one of the, the key tasks. It's not just coding, it's getting them to think analytically and algorithmically. That's what it's all about. And if you can do that, it combines the coding and their love of coding with, with the wonders that we've got in the modern world. And this is the second book that I absolutely love at the moment, Nine Algorithms That Change the Future. If you like the stuff that Quintin developed at Computer Science Inside uh, and, and some of the material in Computer Science Unplugged, this sort of gives supplementary material in greater depth that you can easily build excellent teaching resources from. So um, if you've got good books that you want to share with people, please send me a report about 350 words and it will go in the next newsletter. Sorry. <laughs>